I tie my laces and walk adjacent to Father's patience. Right next to Satan, the sin lies that come me raiment. Can't grow complacent, my heart is racing, the Lord is waiting. I follow in his footsteps, it's not complicated. I've been living in this hell, so I gotta make it. This could be my only chance, so I gotta take it. So I gotta take it. Brothers been tripping for too long, so I've been walking face up through the mud with my boots on. And I'll be damned if I do wrong. I just hate when the news on. Cause all I'm seeing is depression and oppression all up in their face. And they wanna give up on a day by day. Just know the Lord, He is making a way. So if you keep in the faith, hold your head high, it's gonna be okay. And I don't even feel no more. My people getting killed, it's getting really real. And they don't wanna live on, oh, no. No, no. It's cause of the sin, why we always gotta die on the block Why our sisters always gotta cry on the block The mama feel the pain when I walk, I walk And she hates how I talk, why you talk like that? Like Burn clothes in my two sides See the black is getting too high Time's running low, need a new watch They fell for the dua That thing, that thing I really, really wish you knew that you I've been through all these extreme things I'm trying to figure out what happened to you and me, man Trying to figure out what happened to you and the mind I'm flipping on the nose and hear the blues when I see things I see hatred all around Fighters and murders with a frown My brother in a puddle on the ground Like what the hell we gonna do now? When everything is going south Remember who you are, pick up your car My people feel no more Feel no pain when they kill no more And I don't even feel no more. My people getting killed, it's getting really real. And they don't wanna live on, oh, no. No, no. It's cause of the sin, why we always gotta die on the block. Why our sisters always gotta cry on the block. And mama feel the pain when I walk, I walk. And she hates how I talk, why you talk like that, like that. Feel I tie my laces and walk adjacent to Father's patience. Right next to Satan, the sin lies that come me raiment. Can't grow complacent, my heart is racing, the Lord is waiting. I follow in his footsteps, it's not complicated. I've been living in this hell, so I gotta make it. This could be my only chance, so I gotta take it. So I gotta take it. Brothers been tripping for too long, so I've been walking face up through the mud with my boots on. And I'll be damned if I do wrong. I just hate when the news on. Cause all I'm seeing is depression and oppression all up in their face. And they wanna give up on a day by day. Just know the Lord, He is making a way. So if you keep in the faith, hold your head high, it's gonna be okay. And I don't even feel no more. My people getting killed, it's getting really real. And they don't wanna live on, oh, no. No, no. It's cause of the sin, why we always gotta die on the block Why our sisters always gotta cry on the block The mama feel the pain when I walk, I walk And she hates how I talk, why you talk like that? Burn like clothes in my two sides See the black is getting too high Time's running low, need a new watch They fell for the do out That thing, that thing I really, really wish you knew that you I've been through all these extreme things I'm trying to figure out what happened to you and me, man Trying to figure out what happened to you and the demon I'm flipping on the nose and hear the blues when I see things I see hatred all around Fighters and murders with a frown My brother in a puddle on the ground Like what the hell we gonna do now When everything is going south Remember who you are, pick up your car My people feel no more Feel no pain when they kill no more Feel how I feel when I'm feeling, feeling so no. 
And I don't even feel no more While people getting killed, it's getting really real And they don't wanna live or no No, no It's cause of the sin why we always gotta die on the block Why sisters always gotta cry on the block And mama feel the pain when I walk, I walk And she hates how I talk, why you talk like that, like that I tie my laces and walk adjacent to father's patience. Right next to Satan, the sin lies that come me raiment. Can't grow complacent, my heart is racing, the Lord is waiting. I follow in his footsteps, it's not complicated. I've been living in this hell, so I gotta make it. This could be my only chance, so I gotta take it. So I gotta take it. This could be my only chance, so I Brothers been tripping for too long. So I've been walking face up through the mud with my boots on. And I'll be damned if I do wrong. I just hate when the news on Cause all I'm seeing is depression and oppression all up in their face And they wanna give up on a day by day Just know the Lord he is making a way So if you keep in the faith, hold your head high, it's gonna be okay And I don't even feel no more My people getting killed, it's getting really real And they don't wanna live on oh, no, no, no It's cause of the sin, why we always gotta die on the block Always gotta cry on the block. The mama feel the pain when I walk, I walk. And she hates how I talk. Why you talk like that? Burn clothes in my two sides. See the block is getting too high. Time's running low, need a new eye. They fell for the door. That thing, that thing. I really, really wish you knew that you have been through all these extreme things. I'm trying to figure out what happened to you and me, things. Trying to figure out what happened to you and the D mind. I'm flipping on the nose and hear the blues when I see things. I see hatred all around. Fighters and mothers with a frown. My brother and a puddle on the ground. Like, what the hell we gonna do now? When everything is going south. Remember who you are, pick up your car. How people feel no more. Feel no pain when they kill no more. And I don't even feel no more. My people getting killed, it's getting really real. And they don't wanna live on oh, no. No, no. It's cause of the sin, why we always gotta die on the block. Why our sisters always gotta cry on the block. And mama feel the pain when I walk, I walk. And she hates how I talk, why you talk like that, like that. Yeah. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus 5 and 1. Yeah, that's 
right. I said Christ. I see Christ in you. You're my brother. You are now tuned in to Truth Be Told. I see my my brothers that be better than me. Truth be told. You are now tuned in to Truth Be Told. This is what we must do to avoid and be. Truth be told. Truth be told. And blacks and Hispanics are family. Truth be told. Truth be told. I just pray you see Christ when you see me. Truth be told. Truth be told. Watch this. These men spoke wisdom because they understood the scriptures. Preach. Because people in that stronghold, and again, that's why our communities are in the shape of the end because of sin. Yeah, when people bring out the Christ is black, people say color don't matter, but yet they ride to the movie theaters on elephants with kente claws right. because of a black superhero, but the color of Christ All don't matter. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, is for instruction in righteousness. That hidden ones because our people don't know that we're the Israelites according to the Bible. Welcome back to Be Told DC. I'm Officer Matthew. To my left, Officer Micah. Officer Mendel. To my right, Officer Matar. So today's title is Evil Communication Corrupts. So before we get into it, let's open up with John 8 32. The book of John, chapter 8, and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the truth is, you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans make up the 12 tribes of Israel and were called to repentance in these last days. So let's jump right into it. Let's get uh, 1 Corinthians 15 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Right. The scriptures say don't be tricked. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Many of us experience that. You know, if you have children, you see. You know, or, or children you see growing up, as they grow up and old, they get older, they get into the middle school and high school area, you see a whole different spirit get on the children because they're getting around evil communications. We see it on a day-to-day basis. So let's go to First Peter 1 and 15. Watch this. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 15. But as he which hath called you is holy. Mm-hmm. Mean a separate. So be ye holy mm-hmm. in all manner of conversation. And what? In all manner of conversation. Right. Read. Because it is written, uh-huh. be ye holy, for I am holy. Right. So we have to separate ourselves from the world. We can't be around here talking about smoking weed, bees, hoes. What else is out there? All, you want to say something? Just everything that they put on right. TV. And, yeah, and, the, the typical and the stuff you see in the internet. The, right. <laughs> you want to say something, Officer Mandel? Yeah, I was going to say a lot of the uh, stuff, the evil communication coming from Esau and his television and his radio. Right. And even if it's us up front, he's behind the scenes manipulating things. Oh, for sure. You know he he back there. He back there work. He pulling the strings. So let's. Go, oh, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm saying he just like Geppetto. Yeah, exactly. Let's go to Ephesians chapter four, verse twenty-two. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter four and verse twenty-two. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Right, because when you come into this truth, drop that. Hold that though. Give me Second Corinthians five and seventeen. This is why he. This is why the scripture is in here. So we got to put off the form of conversation with the old man. We got to be renewed in the spirit of our mind with how we talk, what we listen to, what we ingest as far as our communications. A lot of us we still, you know, watching the uh, uh, salacious shows and things like that. Those things weigh on the spirit. Bring that out. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seventeen. Mm-hmm. 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he is a new creature. He's what? He is a new creature. Read. Old things are passed away. Uh huh. Behold, all things are become new. Right. So let's go to this new man again. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. Uh-huh. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, mm. which is corrupt. Which is what? Which is corrupt. Read. According to the deceitful lust. Right, according to the deceitful lust. Who's putting these deceitful lust out here? Austin Mandela already said it. That's right, Esau, the so-called white man. He's the God that's running this earth right now. We read that in Job 9. And then Paul broke it down again in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, man. Read. Verse 23. Uh-huh. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Right. So what's going to renew our mind? Get that real quick. Give me that in Psalms 19 and 7. Then we're going to play a video. We're going to play a video. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. The law of the Lord is perfect. Read. Converting the soul. So the laws of God is perfect. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Go ahead. Go ahead. So if the law of God is perfect and that converts us, so what is the crypt communication going to do? Right. It's going to keep, keep us evil as hell. Right. That's like we do. are currently. Y'all going to see it on these videos. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. I mean, everything in the scriptures that's written has happened and is going to happen, regardless if a, if a scoffer believes it or not. Read. Making wise the simple. Doing what? Making wise the simple. Right. Don't get it twisted. All of us up here was once simple brothers before we repented and surrendered our life according to the scriptures. Let's go ahead and roll this video about these evil communications. You're going to see the puppet masters and work behind the scenes. Go ahead and play that video. He then gave the floor to a man who only introduced himself by first name and gave no other details about his personal background. Mm. I think he was the owner of the residence, but that was never confirmed. He briefly praised all of us for the success we had achieved in our industries and congratulated us for being selected as a part uh, as part of this small group of decision makers. At this point, I began to feel slightly uncomfortable and the strangeness of this gathering. The subject quickly changed as the speaker went on to tell us that the respective companies we represented had invested in a very profitable industry, which could become even more rewarding with our active involvement. Damn. He explained that the companies we worked for had invested millions into, millions into the building of privately owned prisons and that our positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability of these investments. Hmm. Then he says, I remember many of us in the group immediately looking at each other in awe and confusion. At the same time, I didn't know what a private prison was, but I wasn't the only one. Sure enough, someone asked this, someone asked what these prisons were and what any of this had to do with music. <clears throat> we were told that these prisons were built by privately owned companies who receive funding from the government based on the number of inmates. Mm -hmm. The more inmates, the more the government would pay these prisons. Mm -hmm. It was also made clear to us that since these prisons are privately owned, as they become publicly traded, we'd be able to buy shares. Most of us were taken back by this. Again, a couple of people asked what this had to do with us. At this point, my industry colleague who had first opened the meeting took the floor again and answered our questions. He told us that since our employees had become solid investors in this prison business, it was now in their interest to make sure that these prisons remain filled. Our job would be to help make this happen by making music which promote criminal behavior, mm. rap being the music of choice. Mm. He assured us that this would be a great situation for us because rap music was becoming an increasingly profitable market for our companies. And as employees, we'd also be able to buy stocks in these prisons. Immediately, silence came over the room. You could have heard a pin drop. Hmm. I remember looking around to make sure I wasn't dreaming and saw half of the people with dropped jaws. My days was interrupted when someone shouted, is this a fucking joke? At this point, things became chaotic. Right. Two of the men who were part of the unfamiliar group grabbed the man who shouted and, and attempted to remove him from the house. A few of us, myself included, tried to intervene. 
one of them pulled out a gun, pulled out a gun, and we all backed off. They separated us from the crowd, and all four of us was escorted outside. My industry colleague, who opened up the meeting earlier, hurried out to meet us and reminded us that we had signed an agreement and would suffer the consequences of speaking out about this publicly or even those who attended the meeting. Damn. I asked him, why was he involved with something so corrupt? And he replied, it's bigger than the music business and nothing we can do. And, oh, no, no, no. It's bigger than the music business and nothing we want to challenge without risking consequences. We all protested as the as they walked, as we walked back into the house. I remember word for word the last thing he said, "It's out of my hands now." Just remember, you signed an agreement. He then closed the door behind him. The men rushed us to our car and actually waited until we drove off the property. Damn. So. That's some wicked mess, man. Understand that thing, man. Give me that, man. We wrestle not against flesh and blood because he said it's bigger than the music industry. And you heard they said they, they want rap music is the choice music to fill up the prison population. Because yeah, they, they deliberately trying to destroy the Israelites. That's why he said it's bigger. It's bigger than him. Right. Because he don't know it's the ultimate plan. They don't know who they're dealing with. They're dealing with the Israelites. So the whole thing behind that is to destroy us like they've been trying to do. Right. We're going to get that. Watch this because this is what's going on. This is the war that's going on. That's why we got to be mindful when we sitting down there being bombarded by this foolishness. That's warfare. That's a weaponized witchcraft. Understand this thing. What's going on here? Read that. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Uh huh. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You heard the man say that when he was reading the letter. You heard Busy Bone read off the letter that this thing is bigger than the industry, bigger than rap music, bigger than just making money off of locking black people up. Read. But against principalities, uh -huh. against powers, mm -hmm. against the rulers of the darkness of this world, mm. against spiritual wickedness. In high places. That's what the man said. That he told him. He told him in a nutshell. This this is spiritual wickedness in high places, way above your pay grade. And understand? And they prey on. And don't get it wrong. These brothers is talented. That's rap. But they go down there and they they pick the most uh, base and 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 most ignorant of our people to do that. For an example, Chief Keith, one of the Chicago's filled with hundreds of black men just like him. Who could probably has bet who have probably better have better uh, uh, better lyrics to talk about something that could uplift our people? But he's the one who got the big record deal. He's the one who got put on with Kanye West and got paid millions of dollars to produce the same rap that just makes us kill each other. Right, and, and all to get us locked up. But it's bigger than just getting us locked up because the trust and believe the white man prints money every day. He's not interested in money. It's about the oppression of the twelve tribes of Israel. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, and verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And uh, you, we just, you just heard a meeting of, of one of the holes that they were setting up. That's the hole. Read. And they are hid in prison houses. Uh -huh. They are for a prey. And none deliver it. Right. So that hole was one of the one of the methods they used to fill the prison houses with our people. That hole being what? Evil rap music. Read. For a spoil. Uh-huh. For what? For a spoil. Men and our people are on. Even them brothers in the meeting is already spoiled. And to go out and spoil more brothers and sisters with evil uh communications. Read. And none saith restore. Right. The brother, he said, man, we can't do nothing about it. Remember, you signed the contract. None saith restore. That's supposed to be your man. He, 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 he your manager. He got you in there talking about, man, I can't help you. Shut the door behind him. That's wicked as hell, man. Yeah, let's go ahead and roll this next video. Yeah, we're going to roll this next video. Private prisons, privately run companies whose sole revenue source is locking people up. They use campaign contributions and lobbying to make sure we're incarcerating more people than ever so they can make more money than ever. Privately run prisons rake in about $3 billion a year. Yeah, here's the problem. Private prison companies, by definition, need to put people in jail in order to turn a profit. These assholes, sorry mom, make money by charging taxpayers per person per day in prison like a hotel. They're using our corrupt political system to do it and they're growing. 
The prison industry grew 1,600 percent between 1990 and 2010. They're turning our tax dollars into their profits with this simple three-step process. Private prison corporations like the Corrections Corporation of America and GEO Group use their lobbyists to help raise money to re-elect popular incumbents in state and federal elections. Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. They pick candidates who are likely to win and donate enough money to ensure that they get a seat at the negotiating table when it comes time to start writing laws. Next, they hire lobbyists to write laws that make sure their prisons stay full, regardless of what's actually best for public safety. The nonpartisan Justice Policy Institute did some digging to find out exactly what this looks like. The report says, quote, Over the years, these political strategies have allowed private prison companies to promote policies that lead to higher rates of incarceration and thus greater profit margins for their company. Once private prisons have buttered up politicians with campaign contributions and lobbying, they get everything from lucrative state contracts to new, harsher laws that lock up more people for lesser crimes with longer minimum sentences. Nearly every prison deal includes a bed mandate that requires the state to fill 90 to 100 percent of the beds in privately owned detention facilities. It's what we do with the private prisons in Arizona. Uh, essentially, we promise them that whether their beds are empty or full, we will pay for X amount of guys in their prisons. Really? Really think about this for a second. These companies are buying political influence to actually change criminal law. Not because it, you know, makes the public more safe or anything like that, but because their entire profit model depends on it. And this sounds like the stuff of conspiracy theories, but CCA, the biggest private prison company in the country, openly admitted as much in its 2014 annual report, which we're just gonna go ahead and quote directly here. Quote, any changes with respect to drugs and controlled substances or illegal immigration could affect the number of persons arrested, convicted, and sentenced, thereby potentially reducing demand for correctional facilities to house them. So, if you're someone who thinks the war on drugs is a disaster and we should stop throwing nonviolent drug offenders in jail, or if you're sick of a mass incarceration system that targets racial and ethnic minorities and preys on the economically disadvantaged, or if you want to stop locking people up in inhumane facilities that cut costs by slashing security and medical care and lock up children, then too bad, because it means lower profits for private prisons. And if you're someone who likes the idea of letting the private sector handle government services in a more efficient and cost-effective way... Damn. Bruh. <laughs> That's why your man, that's why your man Bill Clinton was flying the drugs in, you know, under Bush. Then he coming in and passed the three strikes with old Sleepy Joe. Now that's your president. It's all a game, man. Give me that in Isaiah 50. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 51 to 20. The book of Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 20. Uh-huh. Thy sons have fainted. Right, they fainted. We fainted. We lost conscience who we are. And we just comatose now so much so we got dumble, mumble rap now. Read. They lie at the head of all the streets. Right. That's where our brothers is at. Out there at the, on the street corners. Because that's what? That's what they was taught. That's what they see. That's what's pushed on our people. Read. As a wild bull in a net. And you run across some of them brothers on that corner. You don't know what, what the hell is going to transpire. You walk past that corner. Read. They are full of the fury of the Lord. Right. Those are the curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28, 15 through 68. Read. The rebuke of thy God. Right. That's the rebuke. So now we got young, wild men out there running loose. But let's get descriptions on how our young men should navigate. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's start at, uh, we chapter 1, we start in that verse 10. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee. Right. With rap music, first of all. Read. Consent thou not. Right. Because these dudes out here rapping, they not living them lyrics. Understand that thing. And then the dummies that was living the lyrics told on themselves getting locked up, getting on a damn Edomite show, Vlad TV, locking themselves up. No snitching, but you get in there snitch on yourself. Dumb. Read. Right. If they say, come with us, uh -huh. let us lay wait for blood. Mm -hmm. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Right, because that's what's going on. You walking down the street, a brother club you over your head for no reason. You ain't done nothing to the brother. I'm talking about run your sneakers. Read. Let us swallow them up alive uh -huh. as the grave mm. and whole as those that go down into the pit. Uh -huh. We shall find all precious substance. Damn. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Mm -hmm. Cast in thy lot amongst us. Come on, man. Let's pull this jack move on the sucker. Read. Let us all have one purse. Oh, they going to they gonna, they gonna divvy it up. But it ain't no honor amongst thieves. Understand that. Read. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Uh-huh. 
Refrain thy foot from their path. Right. So you can't go down that path they going in. Why? For their feet run to evil. Their feet do what? Run to evil. Uh-huh. And make haste to shed blood. Right. They walking down a bloody path. Read. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. Mm-hmm. And they lay wait for their own blood. Right, because the, the net is what? The traps that we just read, the rap music, the drugs in the community, the guns. The birds are us. We have no idea the traps are set. We jump out there and fall right into their trap. Now we locked up in the big house doing 50 to life. Read. They lurk privily for their own lives. Right. They don't even know. They think they are creeping on the come up like, bro, you, you creeping for a 50-year prison sentence. Already in the trap. The white man got cameras all over the place. You got your phone. Then you got brothers on the street corner ducking and dodging our cameras. You look up, it's 80 cameras on the corner. Foolish, man. Read. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain. Right. So is the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain. Read. Which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Mm. That's what's going on in our community. Wild bulls in the net. Go back to Isaiah 51. We have verse 21. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. Therefore, hear now this thou afflicted and hear, drunken. Hear this, you Israelites. What's the this? The Bible. You afflicted and drunken. Read. But not with wine. But not with what? But not with wine. Right, right. We out here stumbling around drunk, like literally sounding like drunk people yeah. rapping these dumb lyrics now. What the hell is that? Get the wine for them. Because you would think these brothers are drunk, headphones on, pants hanging off their ass. What the hell is this? Read that. The book of Micah, chapter 2 and verse 11. Uh-huh. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood. Right. That's all that's out there. The spirit of falsehood. All these fake Facebook posts, brothers posing with money, rented jury, rented cars. Man, I'm a gangster this, gangster that. Brother couldn't uh, punch his way out of a wet paper bag, but he a gangster. It's all deceit and lies to get you in the prison house. They already ran the game. Read. Do lie. Uh -huh. Same. I will prophesy unto thee of wine. Oh, man, we're going to come up on this one. And of strong drink. Uh-huh. He shall even be the prophet of this people. Right. And guess what? Those rappers is the prophets of our people because our people literally go out and do exactly what these idiot rappers say. You want to say something, officer? Yeah, I was going to say, and the, and the sad thing is they don't even really get paid. The way they got the music industry rigged up, they own all your music. You don't get none of the money. They give you little trinkets and stuff like that, like the movie uh, they had. What was it? N.W.A.? How right. they made all that, that Edomite, all that money, and they got completely robbed. They were selling millions and millions right. of records. And they ain't have no money. And all, everything they had uh, was rented out and stuff like that. They ain't own nothing. And the only one that had a brain out of the crew was Ice Cube. And what's crazy is they got to drop four, five, six albums just to pay back what they owe. Not to keep making more money. They just, they just breaking even with, with, just, with, with uh, uh, the rentals, all that stuff. They just breaking even doing that. They ain't coming off big with that. That thing is literally the closest thing to slavery. The rap game, a straight trap. And once you win, like you said, you got to pay back that 10, 20, 30 million, whatever they fronted you. And it'll be your own brothers, too. Uh, last year or two years ago, uh, it was the news. Kanye, he was trying to get his masters from so-called another uh, black, black, uh, uh, Breeders, right, Jay Z. Right, right. So even his own brother wouldn't give him his own master. So right. the same game the white man play with our people, our people return the same thing, the same evil. Right, because we envy our oppressor. Yep. You know, let's go ahead and uh, let's go back to Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 22. Thus saith thy Lord. The Lord and thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people. Right. These rappers not pleading your cause. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris is not pleading the cause of you so-called Negroes. You got people singing songs and all this other stuff, and he, he hasn't done anything for black folk. But yet, you Negroes save democracy. And then he looking out for the, who he looking out for, the Algerians or uh, the Armenians, the I, Asians, I, I, I know looking out the for LGBT. Asians and transgenders. Right. But y'all save democracy. Read. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling. Uh-huh. Even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Right, and that's what's going on, because all the stuff that we've been afflicted with, the Lord is raising these up as more and more prophets uh, repent. This thing is about to get flipped. Read. Thou shalt no more drink it again. And, and that's the day we're looking for. Understand that thing. We're not looking for more uh, 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 democracy. We're looking for rulership under Christ. Read. But 
I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. That's what we waiting on. You better understand that thing. That's what we waiting on. When them tables get turned under the almighty in Christ. Read. Which have said to thy soul, uh -huh. bow down mm -hmm. that we may go over. And we literally lay down in the streets and they just walk right over us. They just falling out laughing, driving over us and trafficking some more stuff. They even pass laws now. If a Negro lay down in the street, you, you run them over, <laughs> you getting a citizenship award. Read. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground. We done what? And thou hast laid thy body as the ground. Uh-huh. And as the street to them that went over. <clears throat> That's exactly what we did. And we do that literally. Give me that in Hosea, man. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1. What's up? Hear the word of the Lord, uh -huh. ye children of Israel. Do what? Hear the word of the Lord. No, hit Chief Keith. Hear the word of the Lord. Uh, Cardi B. The word of the Lord, uh -huh. ye children of Israel. Ye children of Israel. Read. For the Lord had the controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Right. He got a major problem with us. Understand that thing. Because the, 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 the evil that we doing is, is totally out of control. Read. Because there is no truth nor mercy. Right. We don't have no truth amongst one of us. We, we love to hear lies. We damn sure don't have no mercy. Read. Nor knowledge of God in the land. <laughs> That's for sure. And it's a church on every corner. And crime through the roof. Read. By swearing uh -huh. and lying mm -hmm. and killing. And what? And killing. And killing. Whether it's abortion or literally black on black crime. Abortion is black on black crime, but we're talking about out the womb black on black crime, so you understand. Read. And stealing. Uh, and what? And stealing. Oh, we quick to jack. Uh, uh, watch out, homie. Watch out, homie. Read. And committing adultery. Uh-huh. They break out. Mm -hmm. And blood touches blood. And blood touches blood. I Meaning that's straight black on black crime. That's what we do in our communities. Is that it on that? No. Yeah. Give me. Yeah. Read that. Verse three. Therefore shall the land mourn. Uh huh. That's what's going on. Every you go in our neighborhood, you see in memorial set up left and right. Uh, I know in Baltimore is uh, don't shoot zones and things like that. The land is in mourning. Read. And everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish. Uh-huh. And all our people languish. That's why our people turn to drugs. Read. With the beasts of the field. Uh-huh. And with the fowls of heaven. Uh-huh. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Mm. That's yeah. going, that's yeah, going that's, into poverty. Yeah, that's going into that's, yeah. your food stamps and all that stuff Inflate, like that. All yeah. that's talking, that's talking about yeah. inflation. They already got, talking about a shortage on chicken. Yeah. So uh, if you thought Negroes was desperate for Popeyes last year... It's about to be even crazier. Hey, like I was telling, I was telling you at uh at, on the job that um I went out and was looking at some things in the store, and the the cheesecake then shrank down to like uh seventy five percent of what it was, but it's the same price. Right. And they doing that with all the groceries. Everything is skyrocketing right now. Even cat food. I'm, I'm gonna say for my cat, my cat food went up like ten fifteen dollars. Damn. They even they even feed your beast. <laughs> Keep reading, man. This thing crazy. <laughs> Verse 4, yet let no man strive, nor reprove another, Uh huh. for this people are as they that strive with the priests. Right, that's what we do. We come out there on the corner, you try to teach our people. They don't want to reprove one another. They don't, they striving with us. We tell them, brother, you, you a king on the earth. Sis, you a princess. I don't want to hear that. I'm a wop. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a thug. I'm whatever. That's what our people saying. Read. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day. Mm-hmm. And the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, mm -hmm. and I will destroy thy mother. Right, we're gonna be utterly destroyed as a people, and all these people that you hold up as your prophets, your idols, they're gonna get laid down. Read, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and that's what's going on. They had them in the meeting talking about you're gonna rap your rap music is gonna be the tool you're gonna to use to get your people locked up, and they were still confused trying to figure out what's going on. Read it again, my people are destroyed. For lack of knowledge. That's why they brought them into that meeting and just talked so blatantly and disrespectful to them. Because they know that IP, they brought the bases in there. They said, we're just going to tell these niggas, blah, 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 and they're going to go for it. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. We, we have rejected the laws of God. Read. I will also reject thee. And do we not look like a rejected people? Who's out here really uh, welcoming our people as a whole with open arms? Nobody. Read. That thou shalt be no priest to me, uh huh. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy seeing God, seeing what? 
seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. We forgot the laws of God, and it's obvious in our communities. Read. I will also forget thy children. Right. That's why, guess where our children at? He forgot our children. We already read our children locked up in the prison houses. We underneath the God of this world because we rejected the laws of God. So give me that in uh, Zechariah 11 and 5. And then these people, we're going to get on this. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. Uh-huh. Whose possessors slay them. Who's what? Whose possessors slay them. Are we not a possession of the so-called white man? If you didn't know, peep your last name. Read. And hold themselves not guilty. Look at all the verdicts. Brothers getting choked out on camera, shot in the back, all this other stuff. What's the verdict on them? Not guilty. Okay. And they that sell them and say. And they that sold us. We know who sold us. What do they say? Blessed be the Lord. God bless America. For I am rich. We rich. Matter of fact, we so rich, we making money from locking niggas up like 90 going north. And their own shepherds pity uh -huh. them not. Here we go. We about to get a shepherd now. The BLM. That's right. You, you know we wasn't going to let this madness slide. Go ahead and roll a video. the leaders of the Black Lives Matter organization, who calls herself a trained Marxist, is now being called a fraud. After property records showed, Patrice Cullors shelled out millions of dollars on four luxury homes, one of them in Los Angeles' exclusive 88% white Topanga Canyon. This is the Associated Press reports Black Lives Matter took in some $90 million in donations last year. Now remember, this is the organization. The movement with people in the streets, they're not getting rained down on by cash. Now other people in the organization want an investigation into the group's finances. The head of the New York chapter of BLM Org also wants a close look at Color's personal finances, saying a self-professed socialist should ask how much of their own money is going to charitable causes. Oh, this is interesting. Pete Hegg says. She, you know what? She's actually a very well-trained Marxist. You see that? BLM, buying lots of mansions with y'all Negroes' money, man. That's what that stands for. $90 million, she's a Marxist and all that, but yet none of the local chapters got any of the money. She don't pity her people. Didn't you move into a community with 98% white folk? This game ran on all y'all, man. Not to mention she hates uh, men. She hates the black man. Right. So, you know, BLM, right. that's the black lesbian movement, man. Right. They, up in there getting young. paid. She up in there no, didn't do anything, $90 million. She had bought five or six mansions. So, you know, that's one form of communication and how they uh, corrupt, you know, corrupt the brothers. Uh, a lot of the sisters, too, with your Cardi B's and, you know, Beyonce's and all of that stuff. And, you know, somebody like Beyonce, she promotes a lot of um, feminism. Yeah, all of that stuff like that. So that's what we're about to get into now because – it's also an agenda to separate uh, the black man and the black woman. That's heavily pushed in the media. And that's and you can see it on all the shows and commercials, and we're going to play some videos to prove that. Let's go to, let's see what God says. Let's go to Genesis 2 and 18. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. So you know what? It, that's letting you know right there that single men, it's not good to be a single man. You understand that? Is he, God is letting you know, look, I made man and woman to be together. Read. Man and woman, right? I will make him in help meet for him. So he made the woman to be a helper. So that's a team right there. Mm -hmm. You're more powerful as a team. Uh, what's that? Ecclesiastes uh, 4 and 9. Get that real quick. Let's get that real quick. Let's go to the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. Two are better than one. What the Bible say? Two are better than one. Read. Because they have a good reward for their labor. You see that? So, but what do they teach in America? Let's go back to Genesis uh, 2 and 18. Let's read that again one more time. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. So the, God is being consistent all throughout the Bible. He's letting you know that we work together. You understand that? That's a unit there. Read. I will make him in help meet for him. All right, so that's good. Let's jump down to uh, verse 23. Verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman 
because she was taken out of man. You see that? So that's like, you know, that those two, that's one flesh when you come together. So, it, you know, as a husband and a wife, you're working together, you can get things done together. But in America, they promote, oh, the strong black woman, you don't need no man. You the independent woman. You know, you go out there and cut the grass and work on your car and all of that stuff. That's what they want the woman to do because they they actually taking away your 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 protection because a black man is your protection whether you know it or not. Where the hell is the strong Chinese woman at? Nobody ever demands that. And was really crazy. So from we read in the beginning from Genesis, right? So from the beginning to the end of the Bible, it's always a man and a woman. Literally, thus saith the Lord. A five-year-old can understand this. So why are Christian pastors preaching and saying it's okay for men to be with men and women with women? And saying that's that's what God says. God is okay with it. Clearly lies, and our people just let it roll right atop of our heads. Clearly. What are you saying? Woman, thou art loosed. So, so they can get their crusty hands on you. Go to uh, they, could they... 1 Corinthians 11 and uh, 8. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Read. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Because also in America, they try to push the equality or they try to reverse roles and those type of things. But God has an order set up. And when his order is done properly, that's when a woman and a man are the happiest. You, you never see a woman happy with a beta male. It's never, they are never happy. They're always miserable when they with beta males. Come on, nigga. Yeah, they're not happy. They, they, don't, they really want a man. Because that's the natural role. That's what the way God set it up. Let's go to uh, Matthew's 19. Let's see what Christ had to say. The book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 5. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And he shall do what with his wife? Cleave to his wife. Read. And they twain shall be one flesh. So that's to let you know that once you get together with your rib, that's one, you one flesh now. Y'all a unit. You understand? That's how God set that thing up. Let's go to, uh, hold on. Read, read verse 6. Verse 6. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. You see that? So that's how tight y'all are. You, you inseparable. Let's, so let's go ahead and see what Babylon pushes. Let's see if they're in agreement with the Most High God. Go ahead and run that. Five years of my life, I come from a very long line of strong women. They always encourage me to use every single resource to help another young woman who's on her journey. I am sure black women will lead this nation to a better place. We're taking control and we're shaping our stories. So now that that was a Cadillac commercial. So 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 you see how they push it. They don't have you know when you see the Edomites, when you see white folks in commercials, they got them together as a family. But you always got the strong black woman. I don't need no man. I'm good. Could you imagine if that monster came with your Cadillac? You couldn't drive that thing off a cliff fast enough. Hey, look. Let me tell you something, man. That's why a lot of sisters can't get married because because they got that that mentality. They got the Babylonian mentality, and dudes don't want to deal with that. They'll deal with you long enough to get what they want, but after that, they're gonna get out the door as fast as they can. Yeah. So let's go ahead and let's get uh, Ephesians. Let's get that. Ephesians chapter five and verse twenty-two. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Because we got to submit as men, we have to submit to the Lord. The order is God, Christ, man, woman, then children. It's a structure there. So the women supposed to, and we're not talking about a dude that's not keeping the commandments. I mean, you know, that's living ungodly. He beating you over the head and, you know, abusing you. That's not what that's saying right there. And that's not saying you're going to be a slave or something like that. That's saying that those individuals in their godly roles, that's what you're supposed to do. Read, read verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. But that's not what Esau pushes. But if you look at Esau, that's how his family is. If you look at Moab, the Chinese, that's how their family are. Every nation has that structure except for ours. We're the only uh, nation that's, uh, that they're teaching that you don't need a man or you're equal or better than your man. Read that. 
even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So your husband is the head of the wife, even, even as Christ is the head of the church. That's a strong comparison right there. So women, really, you got to really look at that scripture when you see that. Read. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, read. So, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. You see that? That's letting you know. That's, that's heavy right there, man, when you read that. That's heavy right there for sisters. That's a heavy verse right there. Keep reading. Husbands, love your wives. See, now this part is heavy too because it's letting you know that the husband can't treat his wife any kind of way. Loving your wife is doing what? You have to treat her according to the laws. You understand that? And there's a lot of laws that dictate how a husband should operate. And the wife is going to be happy if the husband is operating in those laws. Read. Even as Christ also loved the church. Because how does Christ do, how does Christ treat us as men? You understand that? Or as people, period. The love that Christ has for us, he gave his life for us. Read. And gave himself for it. You see that? Read. Oh, that's it right there. Let's get right there. So let's jump to, let's go to, where we at? Let's get the video. Now we're going to show you the, what that first video produces this is the video right here. What's produced out of that first video? Do you have any kids? Yes, I do. I have two. So, in other words, fuck marriage, but I have kids. Uh, it wasn't really that. Me and their father was together as teenagers. Okay. And then just by the time we got to uh, the marrying age, I would say by the time we were 23, 24, looking towards marriage, I was done with the relationship. Um, he cheated How a lot, so. But, but, but you already had the kids. Yes, we already had the children, yes. So this one, so I've said this before and I've said it again, black women, it seems like being a, being a wife is more of a big deal than being a mother. For some people, it was never that type of thing to me. And maybe because of what I saw as far as being a wife, you know, I saw Okay, so, so why don't you, okay, so I don't want to just assume, but how old are mm -hmm. your kids? 14 and 9. 14 and 9? Yes. And how old are you? 33. 33? Yes. So you had a kid at 18 or 19 years old. Mm-hmm. And then another one at 24, 25, 23, 24. Yes. All right. So why was marriage no big deal then? Um, marriage was never a big deal on mine. I, I, I would say because I personally never, um, I think I have like commitment phobia almost. You got what? Like I have. A thing with commitment. I just don't personally believe, you know, the vows that people But you, but you made a baby with somebody. I don't see people live their lifestyle, basically. So, so another, so what? See, this doesn't make sense to me, is man, because it's like phobias and commitment. You committed to being somebody's mama until you die. Yes. What is it with women like yourself that don't seem to realize that that's crazy to us? Meaning that you, you, it's all right to be a mama and struggle or, or try to make, try to do the job of two people as one person. Well, actually, I never had to do the job as far as their dad by myself because their dad has always been present. However, um, in a single mom aspect of, you know, us living apart, I live, you know, in my separate state and you live in yours. Present that doesn't mean see, difficult, but that, so I never see, wanted to be a we, we get it, but we get it confused just because a child can be maintained. Uh -huh. A roof overhead, food on his on a plate, and clothes on a bag does not mean a child is being raised. The job trying to do the job of two people means you're one person in the house. All right. That means there's a deficit. That means you're one side. You are unbalanced. It's a female's way of looking at things with no man in the house. And as somebody who has had to try to do things on the weekend, that's not the same. Why no, that's that? not the same. However, that doesn't mean every woman. I don't 
you get what I'm saying? Some women look at marriage or being a wife as a pivotal point to success and in, in life. That just never been. You sound very I've never, I mean, So it's, it's all right. To, so it's basically okay to walk around with you and kids and no and no structure. No, not me and my kids and no structure. Yes, we probably should have more structure with having a father in the home. Absolutely, there's more structure, but it's okay for me to not be to be committed to being a mother, but not being committed to being a wife. No, it's not. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. See, I get, I get that y'all want to believe that, but the, but the results are really clear. That's why the black community is at the bottom because there's so many women that, like yourself, think, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll commit to being a mother. It's either listen. Now I'll let you speak. Don't over. Don't don't let me speak. And then okay. your child is fourteen and nine. You don't know what it's going to be yet. You don't know until they're out of your house and realize, ever eighteen, what kind of people do we make? So you really don't know yet. But what we do know is the woman that came before you, that mm -hmm. have children, and don't worry about marriage. Do you have boys or girls? I have a son and a daughter. So you don't want your daughter to be married either? No, not that I don't want my daughter to be married. If that's what she wants to do, she can. But I've never made it a priority or a thing for myself. That's just me. But, I don't but it was all right to I have, have not met. I have not met the man that I feel that I can commit to. That you feel like the man you could do what? That I can commit to with the way that he acts. Just like perfect example. I could well, be make their babies father for the and then why make really? so see ma'am all this stuff would make sense if you wouldn't decide to make a, become a mother once or twice and this is what i need you ladies to start listening to close your mouth in listen. this situation listen 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 this is what's wrong for the problem in our community we got women making saying this stuff and y'all don't listen to the rep this is why our community is jacked up we got so many individual women talking about, well, you know, I don't need to, I don't, I don't know a man who can do this or that. And it's like, well, who cares? You, you're somebody's mother, and we need families. Yes, we do need families, but I do not support being a family with a male just because you have a penis does not mean you can leave. But then why have his babies? What do you want to have his babies? I had, we were in love. We had children, just like people get married and they get divorced. It's the same thing. No, it's not. It is not the it same is. thing. The bottom line is that first commercial that we played, that's in, that's in our minds. You don't want to submit. Our women are the only women that say, I don't need a man. You don't ever hear no other women say that. And that's her mindset. I have some babies or whatever, but I don't need no man. I could do by myself because you don't want to submit. And that's, what, that's why we went through those uh, scriptures before, because you have a lot of sisters that think like that. Not all sisters, but a lot of them think like that. So let's go to Proverbs, because she had a man in the house. So let's get this, Proverbs 14 and 1. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house. So a wise woman is somebody that's going to keep the laws and understand they're going to build their house. They're going to have a man in the house. They're going to understand what it takes to build a house, because you can't do it by yourself. You will help me. Read. But the foolish plugged it down with her hands. Just like that sister right there. She had a man in the house, ran the man out the house. I'm, I guarantee you with her mouth. Can't nobody deal with that. I'm going to tell you that right now. Go to uh, 1 Peter 3. Let's see what the Bible say. And this is, why, this is something that Esau know right here and why he always want to separate the woman from the man because this is what he knows. He'll tell you, you're a strong black woman. You don't need a man. But let's see what God say. Read that. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. So dwell with your wife according to knowledge, according to God's laws. And we're going to go over some of them. Read. Giving honor unto the wife. Giving honor to your wife. Read. As unto the weaker vessel. Because he know that the woman is the weaker vessel. So you got to think about it. Our enemy, Esau, he understands, look, that woman is weaker than the man. Let's get the man out the way. Then we can have our way with the women and the children. That's just simple, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not even, that's not complicated. That's why he putting all this propaganda out there for our sisters, and our sisters falling for it. That's divide and conquer. The That's oldest, what it the is. Oldest war divide in the and book. conquer. Man, you hit the nail on the head. Read that. Keep reading. And as being heirs together. Being what? Heirs together. Meaning we're supposed to get the kingdom together as a unit. Me, me and my wife are supposed to go in the kingdom together as a unit. Not by yourself. Read. Of the grace of life. 
that your prayers be not hindered. Because your prayers ain't even going to get answered if you and your wife ain't on one accord. That's what the Bible's saying right there. So that's that one flesh right there. Let's jump to Ecclesiastes. Let's get some of the laws on how a husband's supposed to roll with his wife. Let's get that real quick. We're going to run through these. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 9. Live joyfully with the wife of whom thou lovest. You see that? The Most High commands the, the man to live joyfully with his wife. So we're not, just because you, you have a particular role to play, don't mean that you're going to be miserable. You're going to be happy because if it's a man of God, because he's going to live joyfully with his wife. Read. All the days of the life of thy vanity. Read. Which he have given thee under the sun. Keep reading. All the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life. Because your wife is the portion that God set aside for you in this life. Read. And in thy labor, which thou takest under the sun. Okay, so let's go to Colossians 3 and 19. Let's get that. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 19. Husbands, love your wives. So love your wives. That's going back into keeping the laws with your wife. Read. And be not bitter against them. Okay. So, all right, let's, go, let's keep on moving. Let's roll. Let's go to Proverbs. Yeah, we got to try to move. We got to try to get this stuff in. Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 18. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Read. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. Now, this is, you can take this both ways. This is going into wisdom, and you can also take it literally as talking about your woman or your wife. Read. And be thou ravished always with her love. Keep reading. And why wilt thou, my son? So, see, this is the most high God is talk, telling men how to deal with your wives. This is heavy right here. Because a lot of people, you know, when they think about it, they think, you know, the romance and all that. Nah, you got to have a romance with, with your wife. Read. Be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger. So why would thou even jump out? Because you got a lot of brothers that jump from woman to woman or just messing around on, on the side. But the Most High God said, you got your wife, deal with her. Ravish your wife. Don't go out there cheating and dealing with strange women on the side. Read. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord. Because everything that you're doing, the Most High is watching, and they're taking note of that. Read. And he pondereth all his goings. All right, so let's jump. Let's go to, let's get the video, short video. Let's get this right here. So why is it so hard for our sisters to go out of their way to please their man? Well, I think uh, whenever I hear a sister say that, uh, she don't like men, including the our gay sisters. When they say, I can't stand men, I don't want no man, I'm tired of them, I'm moving on, and a lot of things, then they really haven't had a man because there's nothing more satisfying than being able to please your man in the home, especially in regard to fixing his food, fixing his dessert, helping him dress, and just little small things that we can make him feel wanted. We have a man who everybody hates. Mm. We hate him. His mama hates him. His family hates him. The white police hate him. The regular white men and white women hate him. This is a man who is hated by everyone. The mm. only solace that God made for him was us. And when he mm. comes to us and can't get any sanctuary at all, then he mm. don't have no life. And th then they win because what they want to do is to destroy him and make us think that we are better than him so that we will help the enemy destroy our own man that God gave us. We have the best man on earth. Everybody want him. He looked better than everybody. He's stronger than everybody. He is the best, the wisest, and the most beautiful. Now, of course, many of our men have been tricked by the enemy too. But since we are the mothers, we are the first face they see. We are the first person they talk to. We the first person to feed them. We do all of that and raise them up. Mm. And so if there's a silly man out here, he didn't grow up and be silly. He was silly as a little boy because his mother mismanaged him and didn't reparent him using the truth. 
That's heavy right there. The sister, she and she said the enemies is the right. one that's promoting this stuff, yeah. and that's what we showed in the beginning with the with the video. I mean, it's a lot of videos you can show feminism being promoted to our sisters, trying to divide her from her from her husband. But uh, let's keep it moving. Let's. I got uh, two more scriptures. First Timothy five and eight. Let's get that real quick, because this is what a good man's supposed to do. First Timothy chapter five and verse eight. But if any provide not for his own. And especially for those of his own house. Because God, the man is supposed to be a provider. You understand that? You ain't supposed to have to take a brother to court, child support court, to get him to take care of his own kids. Read. He has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So guess what? If you keep in God's commandments, then you, your, your husband, if, uh, if you got a righteous husband, he's going to make sure that you got everything that you need. Your needs are met. Let's go to uh, Job 42. Job chapter 42 and verse 15. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. Can you read? And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. You see that? So that's another thing that a man is supposed to do, leave an inheritance. Maybe if the brother ain't got a lot of money, the inheritance is still the laws. He passing the laws down to his kids so they can understand how to live. He might not never make a lot of money. You understand that? So that inheritance is going into your history, the laws, and all of those things. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, that's it. One thing I want to bring up what the sister said about how the mothers raise the children is very important because that evil communication can start in the womb when it's a baby in diapers. That evil communication can start at a very young age. So go to Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Uh -huh. Train up a child in the way he should go. So train up a child. We need to be training up our children in the way they should go, which is following this Bible, not following uh, BET, MTV, not following HGTV, the Bible. Read. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. If you, like Officer Mandel said, if you instill those values of the law, statutes, and the commandments in our history in that child when he's younger, it's a 90% lesser chance of him going off when he's older. But if you're not instilling values in that child, he's going to go whichever way, whichever way he, uh, the media takes him, whichever way his friends take him. Jump to uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 1. And that's a commandment for you parents. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. Now, now, these are the commandments. Now, these are the what? The commandments. These are the commandments. The statutes. The statutes. And the judgments. Uh -huh. Which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. Which was commanded to get taught to us. And what else? That ye might do them in the land. That we might do them, not know them, not repeat them, not say they're done away with. That we might do them. Whither ye go to possess it. Read. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. Uh-huh. To keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee. All right, jump to verse 6. Verse 6. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Meaning they need to be in our minds. We need to always remember them. When, when, when it's good times, when it's bad times, when we're not battling, when we are battling, you got to remember those laws in your mind. Just like when you're driving and you see it's a yellow light about to turn red, you remember, huh, if I run that red light, I can get a ticket or a die. The same way you see sin coming your way, you got to remember, huh, this can get me trapped up or I could die twice. Read. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. That doesn't mean uh, once a week you do a 30-minute uh, uh, lesson with your kids and you just stick them in front of the TV the rest of the week. Nah. You got to go over stuff with your children continually. Just like we need to go over scriptures continually. Yeah, the, and the sisters. Yeah. The sisters need to be doing that because y'all are home with the children. You're the ones raising them. You're the ones who are around them most of the time. Read. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. So when y'all sit in the house, make sure you remind them. And it doesn't also have to be verbatim reading scriptures. It's when you see stuff, just remind them, remind them of things that they need to be doing correctly and incorrectly. You might see some of the young, y'all might be out and see something out of order. Say, hey, uh, Joshua, you see that little boy over there wearing a dress? Is that wrong or right? Little stuff like that so they can have visual uh, things they can see of what laws are wrong and what laws what laws they know so they can see what's wrong in the world. Read. And when thou walkest... And yes, little kids are out here wearing dresses now, little boys, yes. Read. And when thou walkest by the way... And when y'all walk into the park, when y'all sitting in the crib... And when thou liest down... When y'all chilling. You, you could be watching a movie, you could be watching a movie for pleasure, and there still might be things in there that you, could, that you could bring out to them that lines up with the scriptures. And when thou risest up... When you get up in the morning before you send them off to school or wherever they're going, make sure they remember and instill those values in them. That's it. All right, let's get that. Uh, let's, yeah, let's get it. The video. While teaching 10-year-olds the, quote, 
pleasures of sex. The folks at the International Planned Parenthood Federation apparently think that is a great idea. That group making the recommendation that, that, that that's what we should teach our 10-year-olds in a new report titled Stand and Deliver. And by the way, they want that teaching to be mandatory. It is a suggestion that has critics calling Planned Parenthood a bunch of, quote, sex-obsessed adults. But is that fair? Joining me now, Fox News contributor and radio talk show host Monica Crowley. All right, Monica. Mm -hmm. This pa Planned Parenthood domestic won't comment on that because they say it's from our international branch and they're closed. We can't reach them right now. Uh, but this, they want this mandatory that we have not just sex ed for 10-year-olds, 10, 10 sex ed, but to teach them, quote, the pleasures of sex. Right. There are plenty of times and there's plenty of, of uh, time in somebody's life to learn the pleasures of sex. A 10-year-old should not be taught that. And here we've got an international organization that clearly wants to dictate to the domestic Planned Parenthood organization to set these guidelines for public schools and organizations. They essentially want the government to put this in place to force the role of sex education onto schools and teachers and the rest supplanting the parents. This is the parent's role, Megan. This is not the role of anybody else except a parent. If a parent deems that their 10-year-old is, is growing and going, starting puberty early and maturing early, then it should be the parent's responsibility and the parent's right to say, gee, maybe my child needs a little bit more education here in terms of the birds and the bees, which now seems like a very quaint notion, right? Yes. Birds and the bees. But to hand it off to bureaucrats, whether it's international or domestic bureaucrats or even your, your so the same Planned Parenthood that black people love and rave about yeah they helping us you know we need contraceptives they want your kids to be taught how to have sex by grown pedophiles and perverts right they that's said, what they want teach them the pleasures of sex who's teaching this class man and you know they they because if them kids get pregnant, you know they're gonna make money off the abortion because they sell up they sell the baby parts. They had that uh, video come out where they take babies and they sell them the parts of them. Because how are you gonna teach the pleasures of something if you're not partaking in it? Meaning what they want to touch your children. That's what they're saying. And why is it only the heathen speaking about this? Why are not people speaking up about this? Because they love it. That's why. Go to Sirach seven and twenty three. This is what we got to do for our children. The book of Sirach, chapter 7 and verse 23. Uh-huh. Hast thou children? Do you have childs? Do you have kids? Instruct them. Teach them the Bible, the scriptures, the laws. And bow down their neck from their youth. And make sure that you're disciplining your children from the youth. That what? They don't grow up to be whoremongers or whores. Then don't, and don't laugh and, and giggle off certain things that they do that might be out of order. Oh, they're just, they're just kids. They don't know that they're kissing or touching each other. They know. Every, everybody has a spirit, and if you, don't, if you don't nip that in the bud, they'll do that as they get older and older and older till it turns into full-blown sex, either oral or whatever, finger-popping, oral or straight up having sex. It's going to turn into that. Read. Have our daughters? Do you have a daughter? So T.I. went through this. He got, he, got, he got shamed by the media. Read. Have care of their body. Have care for their body. Who, who cares if he didn't apply that towards his son? This his his children. If he want to treat his daughter a certain way and his son a certain way, yes, according to the scriptures, he should apply the both the same way. But it's his family. Let him raise his daughter the way he wants to. Read that. 24 again. Hast thou daughters? Hast thou daughters? Have care of their body. Have care of their body, meaning don't let every oh, don't allow her to let every other nigga run up in here and not say anything about it and think it's okay. Read. And show not thyself cheerful toward them. And don't show thyself cheerful, meaning don't act like y'all buddies. Don't be like, oh, oh, dad, I'm going out with Brandon tonight. Okay, have a good time. Bring her back before 11. You know what they're about to do. And you allowing that. Our, our, our people are allowing that today. Think there's nothing wrong with that. Is that it? Keep reading. Verse 25. Marry thy daughter. Not prostitute thy daughter. Marry thy daughter. Not prostitute thy daughter or thy son. Marry your children off. Read that again, 25. Marry thy daughter. That's a commandment. So you, you, you big black mama saying, oh, girl, you, how, how was it, girl? It was good, wasn't it? Your daughter, 16 years old, 15 years old, 13 years old, laughing off with her about her having sex for the first time. Read. And so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. You have performed a weighty matter because that's important. Because what? It's important because a black man or a Hispanic man with a black woman and a Hispanic woman that helps build our nation. That helps to have our race continue and continue. But LGBT kills us off. Uh, abortions kill us off. 
Those are things that are put out there to make us stop producing. The white man, he doesn't want us to continue living. He's trying his best. There's nothing he could do to fully stop us because he's been trying for hundreds of years, thousands of years. The most I wouldn't allow it. But we're just feeding right into the plan. All right, go to uh, get Proverbs. I finish that oh, one. get the article. Get the, finish it out. But give her to a man of understanding. Important part, give her to a man of understanding, not no random wicked nigga that you, because he grew up with his pops and he's a good guy. He play, He's an athlete, so he going he gonna to take care of financially and y'all going to be good like how Mc, uh, Mr. McDowell was. Honey, he's got his own money. <laughs> nah, that's not <laughs> his own money. That's not the type of man. It's not just about financial. Of course, financial is, is important in a marriage, but of course, the laws of God outweigh that. They way more important. I get the article. Evidence shows children who are smacked are more likely to be involved in partner violence in adulthood. Intimate partner violence is indisputably a crisis in Australia. State and federal governments have invested heavily in family violence prevention. However, one area of violence prevention has until now been overlooked. A growing body of research has found a, consi a consistent link between experiencing corporal punishment from a parent in the form of smacking as a type of violence and those children going on to be involved in partner violence in adulthood. I reviewed this literature as well as the prevalence, frequency and severity of corporal punishment practices in Australia. I found Australian policymakers have an opportunity to further strengthen partner violence prevention strategies by legislating against the legal defense of reasonable chastisement of children in the states and territories. In other words, ban smacking So we see there that the white man is going to ride against the Bible again. Man, growing up, I got tore by my mom, my sister, my uncle, and I don't, I don't feel like going out and smacking my wife. That is just propaganda. So people don't discipline their children, let them grow up doing whatever they want, do as thou wilt. And they what? They end up getting either killed, put in jail, or they become the offenders who's out there killing people. They become the killers. That's what they want. Get Proverbs 13 and 24, 25. Let's see what the Bible says. 24. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 24. Uh-huh. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. So he who does not chastise, correct your son, meaning you hate him. If you're not disciplining your children, not abusing them. If you're not disciplining your children, you hate your children. Because why? You can let them continue those negative and bad traits, which is not going to be good for them at all. If, if you don't discipline them now, they, they got a, a, a small mouth on them. You let them, you let it go. They go to school and they say they're wrong than somebody. They get beat up or killed. Who knows how our people act nowadays? Read. But he that loveth him. But you, if you love your son, mothers, fathers, if you love your children. Chasteneth him be times. Chasteneth him but times. Discipline but times. Meaning whenever it's needed, do that. You need to discipline that, that child. Some children, they might listen to verbal correction. But if not, that's where the chastising come into play. You got to know your child. But the Bible says to correct them. And if not, means you hate them. Get the video of the Baltimore shooting. This is what happens when you don't cor correct and beat your children. Monstrous, monstrous women bring forth these monsters. That's what happens. Oh, the criminals are in the city and why so many residents are pleading with city leaders to keep them safe. Keith Daniels joins us live right now with more on that video and tells us it could be disturbing to watch. Keith. Well, Kyle, we're not going to show our viewers someone actually getting killed on TV, but what you do see is a young man who apparently had no problem taking someone's life. And tonight, he's still on the loose. A surveillance camera on someone's back porch captured the moment. A deadly shooting caught on video. A man is seen walking in the alley alone. Then someone else, a younger man appears, gun pointed. Then he shoots. Thirteen gunshots fired, the gunman emptying his weapon, the victim on the ground, screams. The suspect who sneaked up behind his target wasn't even wearing a mask, practically skipping through the alley to shoot someone. 
to kill someone. The ring camera that caught the murder on video was on the back porch of a retired Maryland corrections officer's home on North Hilton Street near Monastery Avenue. There were no words exchanged. That person just ran up and started shooting. A former Marine who served his country, a city resident, fed up with violent crime. It's just despicable that a daylight shooting occur like this, and I want this person killed. The homeowner was at home at the time, but the camera was rolling. It captured video now in the hands of police as they search for the killer. I'm anti-crime, and no one should be getting gunned down. That was an assassination. The victim in this case, a 48-year-old man whose name has not been released. One of four people killed just this week, the latest killing, so brazen, so disturbing, with the suspected killer on the loose. Just uncalled for, it's unwarranted, and this person doesn't belong to be on the streets. Based on hey, hold second as just get Isaiah 3 and 12. So this is what happens when you don't teach your children the laws. You don't chastise and don't beat your children and show them the correct way of how to live. Right, and also what the video we looked at with Kevin Samuels when he was talking to that sister who raising up two children by herself. Let's see what the Bible says, man. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. Uh huh. As for my people. My people, the Israelites, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Mm -hmm. Children are their oppressors. Children are oppressors. We just seen a young man shoot 13 bullets, assassinate an older gentleman in the back of an alley in broad daylight. Broad daylight in his back. Keep reading. And woman rule over them. And who? And woman rule over them. And single, strong, black, I don't need a man, I got a job, I got a career, black woman rule over them. Don't forget big mouth. Big mouth. <laughs> big bunions too. Read. Oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err. Those black women that are raised or not raising up these black men properly, they what? Cause thee to err. It's causing us to err. There's no, there's no family structure. There's no balance. The, the whole balance is thrown all the way off with no black men in the household. Read. And destroy the way of thy path. And destroy the way of thy path. So you get raised up wrong, your whole life is already, it's already over yeah, with. Yeah, look, the, the paths are communities. Brother walking through the alley, he 48 years old. Some young, some young punk come shoot him 13 times in the back, man. You can't even walk in the own path in your neighborhood. Literally. Here's the thing, you know, some of the sisters out there that are single or whatever and they got kids, you know, you got your elders in the church, If you you know what I mean, if, especially if you belong to this organization. I don't know about in Christianity what that man is they got up there, but you got fathers here that are help with the kids and say you can find the Lord. You know, that's the job That's the job of your elders. All right, go to 2 Ezra 5. 2 Ezra chapter 5 and verse 8. Uh -huh. There shall be a confusion also in many places. America is the land of confusion. Ain't, ain't, ain't no more wicked place on this planet right now than America, Babylon the Great. And the fire shall be oft sent out again. Uh-huh. And the wild beasts shall change their places. And the what? The wild beasts shall change their places. So men are trying to be women now. Women are trying to be men. Black women trying to be fathers. Happy Father Day, Ma. Read. And menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. And menstruous wicked women are going to bring forth monsters that are going to terrorize their household and our communities. That was prophesied and it happened because we didn't follow the commandments. Everything I always go back to keeping the commandments. Go to 1 Maccabees 1 and 44. 1 Maccabees chapter 1 and verse 44. That's, that's domestic terrorism right there. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem uh -huh. and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. That we should what? Follow the strange laws of the land. So just like our people did when we became Gentiles, when we started following Greekish, customish ways, our people here nowadays, they love the white man's laws. We, weed is legal, dog. I can smoke now. Now all of D.C., you driving through, you can't, you can't drive anywhere in D.C. without smelling K2 or stinky, stinky weed anywhere now. They couldn't wait to switch bathrooms either. Don't yeah. forget that with Obama, boy. Your boy Obama so bought the bathrooms. You, you got grown men with... with, with you got grown men with beard, beards bigger than mine wearing a tutu in a woman's bathroom. Waiting for children to walk in there. And y'all wanted that. LBGT, BLM. Fair is fair. That's what y'all wanted. Go to the next video. Hi!
Hi, welcome to 2017, nearly 60 years after the invention of birth control, and politicians are still trying to take it away from us. Am I the only one that thinks this is absurd? Nope. It's bonkers. Of course, it makes no sense. Birth control is not controversial. Most people use it, want to use it, will use it, or they benefit from a partner using it. Women have made so much progress. More people are able to maintain their health and plan their futures than ever before. And do you know why that's true? Yep, access to birth control. In fact, one third of the wage gains women have made since the 60s are a result of access to birth control. And the number of women who complete college is six times what it was before birth control became legal. But by creating barriers to get birth control, politicians are threatening our basic health care and all that progress. It's clear that this administration is hell bent on attacking our health and our rights, but we won't let them. We won't go back. And you can help us make sure of it. We demand birth control for all. Join the fight. So you see how destroyed we are. The white man got all women out there like a wind-up toy just speaking all his rhetoric. Like I said, it was the book Willie Lynch where it talks about that, that, that uh, when the slavery, when they took the black men away, beat them, raped us and and diminished us it demasculated us in front of our families and our women that he was going to have an autonomous system run forever and we see that right now right you know you heard the term residual income right where you just laying in the bed just the money rolling in the white man got residual income in the form of our sisters he don't even got to ruffle his pillow to roll over to check the twitter feed to see if negroes is up and, and and out of control he got the black woman already on the front lines making sure he gets a good night's sleep she the first one to defend this devil when the, a brother stand up and rise up, who the first line of defense is the black woman, man. Always, Unbelievable, always. man. Even with the imaging in the commercial, you got two big mouth black women talking, and they even got the white woman. She's sitting there, but they got her quiet. She ain't saying crap. But the two black women, the one talking about is happy. They're happy about, yes, I could keep myself from producing children. Right. Let me, keep my man, let me get this real quick. My fault. Let me, give me Isaiah chapter 32. We're going to read five. We're going to read five, and then we're going to read five and six, and we're going to jump to nine, man. Because we got to, here's the thing. We got, we got the sisters, you got to take your power back. You're, you you have been stripped of your power and repurposed as used as a tool of leverage in the white man's system against your own people. Understand what's going on here. We, through the commandments, must repurpose your power and leverage it to benefit your people. That's what's going on here. He has taken your power and used it and weaponized it against your own people. We have to come back and submit under the laws of God and grow as a nation. Let's get that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 32 and verse 5. Right, because this is what you saw right here. Read that. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. Right. That, that, that sister, them sisters was total liberals with the white lesbian liberal uh, 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 handler in the background, yeah. making sure that them two... Uh, 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 she, she didn't have to look up. The like Manchurian you candidates uh, uh, promoted the agenda. She already knew. Read. Nor the churl said to be bountiful. The churl, is the, the churl means a base person. This man is going to, the white man is talking about, he's the churl, he's the base. He's not going to be viewed as bountiful in these last days. Read. Verse 6. For the vile person will speak villainy. Right, that was total villainy against your own people. You out there promoting the extermination of your race. It doesn't get, that. that if you've seen Austin Powers, that's like the ultimate villain in a movie, man. Read. And his heart will work iniquity uh -huh. to practice hypocrisy. To practice hypocrisy. Planned Parenthood. Uh, now they're saying this is, is to help black communities. But it was founded on the extermination of the black race using the black church and the black women. That's historically documented. Read. And to utter error against the Lord. Right, that was total error against the Lord. When you read uh, Exodus, uh, Shifra and Pua, they, they wasn't down with the Planned Parenthood agenda under ancient Egypt. Here we got two sisters today promoting uh, uh, Egyptian uh, extermination of the Israelites. Read. To make empty the soul of the hungry. Right, our people looking for solutions. Here they come with more ways to destroy the past of our people. 
and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. That's why we in such a low estate. Jump to verse 9. Verse 9. Rise up, ye women. Hold on, what? Rise up, ye women. Meaning you women shake off that liberal spell, man. Read. That are at ease. That are what? That are at ease. She, you hearing all of that was... All that talk to keep our sisters in the damn matrix as a as a, a, a tool weaponized against your own race. Read. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. What he say about our sisters? Ye careless daughters. Uh-huh. That's out of the scriptures. Read. Give ear unto my speech. Our sisters, you got to give ear unto the speech of the Lord. Read. Many days and years shall ye be troubled. Look at the trouble going on in our community. How much longer are we going to tolerate this as a nation? Ye careless women. Ye what? Ye careless women. Why do you think he's saying women? Because as, as the sister uh, Shabazz Ali came out there and said, that, that's the first face that the child sees. That The mother raises up the child. The, the mother is instrumental into building a nation. That's why the white man has used y'all against your nation to keep us in shambles and separated. Understand that thing. Read. For the vintage shall fail, uh -huh. the gathering shall not right. come. Right. They out there talking about being liberated, being liberated. How long y'all going to be ran on this agenda? It's not coming. You want to say something, officer? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, they submitting, but they submitting to the white man because that's his, that's his orders to separate you from your man to have you independent. <laughs> you following his, you submitting to him because that's his plan right there because we reading what the most high got laid out. Let's, uh, are you finished? With that, let's go. Ahead. I'm done on that. Let's I'm, go ahead. I just let's get the video. Let's get right, the next get video. The video. This law will have a devastating impact on the patients that I serve. Um, we know that abortion care is health care. It is very necessary in many instances. about pro-life or the right to life. This bill is about control. People are going to have abortion. The problem is it's going to always be unsafe, inaccessible for those people who uh, have lesser means. Man, you see that? That's unbelievable. And you know what's crazy about it? That one tweet that they had up, saying that uh, if you don't allow blacks to kill their babies, that's white supremacy. Ain't that the most backwards thing you ever heard? So you, you mean to tell me if I don't, if I don't, if I'm, if I'm not allowed to kill my own children being black, that's white supremacy. That is the most backwards thing I ever heard, not man. That's so much they got us fooled. And people actually falling for that. You got these people believing that mess. Right. And, and then you got people in the comments that's offended. Listen. Understand what's going on here. We are in warfare. It's an all-out war on our community. Yeah. Understand that. We got to come together as a people. When, when are we going to wake up from the spell? This place has not treated us well since we've been here. Understand that, brothers and sisters. Don't give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Because what, what happens is our people don't recognize what a, a, a real black man is supposed to look like according to God. You're not getting no soft, effeminized brothers up here. Understand that we're tired of our people being destroyed and people sit back. They got a lot of stuff to say when we're going out there in our communities telling brothers to marry, marry the sisters that you're dealing with. Brothers, get jobs, start businesses. I want to understand what person in their right mind is opposed to this agenda. Clean up your neighborhood. Get off the drugs. Read that. The book of Ecclesi Ecclesiastes, excuse me, chapter 7 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. Surely oppression. Surely what? Oppression. Uh-huh. Make it the wise man mad. Meaning if you just at ease with what you're seeing your people going through, you a foolish brother or sister. 
Read it again. Surely oppression make it a wise man mad. Right. Oh, are we not oppressed? What the hell is the Black Lives Matter movement about if we not oppressed as a people? What is affirmative action about? Remember, America has no racism. Right. That's what they say, right? <laughs> right. Read. And a gift destroyeth the heart. You brothers and sisters, that's not mad. You've been given a gift, the, the white man's illusion of liberty. That's why you're sitting out there commenting against what we're saying. We're talking about building the black community and people out there attacking that. That's already let me know you have been fully indoctrinated by white supremacy. Yep. It was an article I was looking to find. I couldn't find it, but that same exact thing that happened in uh, Alabama and South America, our sisters, they say it's a, like a pandemic because the lack of contraception. Right. Because, because women are, are bringing forth six, five, four children, that is a problem to them. They're saying women are losing their lives. They're trapped. They can't, they can't have no careers. They're having too many children. That is a beautiful thing to be able to bring forth children, but they turn it into evil. That makes it seem like it's evil for them to have children. If you don't want to have a child right now, don't be sleeping with nobody. I saw Bishop said, marry before you carry. If you're not ready for a child right now to take care of them, close your damn legs. It's that simple. But if you are made to somebody... Bringing forth children is a beautiful thing. It's not a negative thing. Contraception is an evil thing. Abortions are an evil thing. We're going to get into that. I don't care if you say, uh, uh, my body, my choice. No, your body, our bodies belong to the most high God. And what we do to it reflects. If you're putting smoke in your body, if you're destroying your body with, with, with uh, things that are, that are hurting it, you're you doing wrong against the most high. Plain and simple. Go to Leviticus 18.21. And uh, cue, the, uh, cue the pictures up. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18, and verse 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. And what? And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. That's a commandment. Don't let any of your children be killed or slaughtered or aborted. Whether it be, oh, it's only two or three weeks. It's not before it's pre-trimester. Pull up here. There we go. Read that again. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. That is a commandment. We're not supposed to be sacrificing our children. And Planned Parenthood is modern day sacrificing to Molech. See it right there. What's that on the right? The Planned Parenthood building. On the left, that's the altars that we use because we follow the heathens. And we was sacrificing our children on them temples, on them same altars. That's a diligent search, man. To, to build that building that fashion, they, yeah. them, they, that satanic architect knew that that ancient temple was used for child sacrifice and designed the Planned Parenthood building in that. Yep. We got to understand what's going on here. That's not coincidence. Not at all. Finish reading that. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. Neither shalt by doing that, by killing our children, we're killing the Most High's creations. I am the Lord. The most high God is the Lord. That's a simple commandment he gave us, and we have to follow it. The next scripture, Exodus 21. The book of Exodus, chapter oh, 21. Before you get that, get that Jaffe memo and uh, zoom all the way on the right. Mm -hmm. On the right side. Get the top first. Yeah, for, oh, top column. Propose measures to reduce fertility... By, un by universally or selectively of impact in the United States of black people. Scroll. The, is it more at the top? Oh, some, okay. uh, yeah, the, oh yeah, this is from Planned Parenthood. You can Google it. And this, is, this one is a little bit cut off. But you can Google the Jaffe Memo. J-A-F-F-E space M-E-M-O. I think it's uh, 1969 that this came. Yeah, 1969 when they produced this. So letting you know this. Uh, project been in the works for a long time. So that means uh, Bill Gates Pappy founded that too. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. See where he gets his ideas from. Put it back up. Yeah, it up. Hey, we're not done. So, uh, we just want that right side. The measures of. Yep. Yep. If we can, if we can move it over to the. Oh yeah, that's a closer. Can we go to the right? We can't. There we go. There we go. Okay. Go to read it, officer. Measures predicated on existing motivation to prevent unwanted pregnancy. Meaning killing our black and Hispanic babies and our Native American babies. That's what that means. Payments to encourage sterilization. So they are paying people to say, hey, come snip your balls. Hey, come tie your tubes. They're paying people to come and get sterilized, saying it's an incentive, saying you don't have to worry about having kids no more. You can have as much sex as you want. Don't worry about having no child to, to bog you down. Read. 
payments to encourage contraception. They want you to be using condoms, or you know, it's, it's that it's, was them two enemy agents on that yeah. Planned Parenthood commercial. That was the two sisters. They fulfilling the Joffe memo. They they they, they autonomous. They they black Ku Klux they, Klan members. They, what we seen running on that solar energy. Not even wind up. They running on solar energy. Black Ku Klux man, uh, Klan members. That's what they were. <laughs> so and even with payment, <laughs> with payment to current contra- contraception, who do they push that to mainly? Kids from like 11 years old to 18, little kids who shouldn't be having sex at all. There's no need for contraception if you're married. If you're both married, what's the need to protect yourself? Yeah, people out here burning, y'all. Make sure you strap up. Make sure you wrap up. Wrap, wrap it up before you clap it up. Nah, get married before you clap it up. Read. <laughs> Payments to encourage abortion. Payments to encourage abortion. So now we just, we, now a black woman are mercenaries. They mercs. They, they didn't use mercs on the earth. Forget the white man. Hired assassins. The, the, the black woman going to the assassin's guild, taking, oh. uh, taking on mushes, missions. Read. Abortion and sterilization on demand. On demand. You could walk in same day, kill your child. Don't, ain't that the new cable thing where you could view on demand? View on demand. What the hell is that? Damn. And what's sad is even the on demand, the, if it wasn't on demand, that wouldn't stop a black woman. Women have been using wire hangers, all types of methods. That's the hatred. You sticking a wire hanger up your vagina to kill your baby. That's wicked. Keep reading. Allow certain contraceptives to be distributed non-medically. We going to Africa on, we, we uh, philanthropists. We're going to Africa giving out condoms. We giving a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, we love you. Nah, they don't want y'all to reproduce. That's what it is. Keep going down. Improve contraceptive technology. Now they got condoms that, that, that kill your sperm. So you know condoms are 100% effective, so they have solutions inside the condoms that can kill your sperm before, before it even gets out. Read. Make contraception truly available and accessible to all. 7-Eleven, gas station, CVS, Rite Aid, school, high school, soon to be elementary schools. If you let the white man do it and you let the black woman run with it, soon to be daycares, they're going to be having that crap in there. Read. Improve maternal health care with family planning, a core element. Read. Hold. Hold. How? That's the witchcraft. Improve maternal health care. That means destroy the uterus with various chemicals and food and other agents that they use on our people. That don't even make no damn sense. Read that again. That, that's, that's just like y- y'all boy Bill Gates saying. In order for, her, for us this to be good, we need to get this number here. So we got to kill certain people, but they're presented like it's a good thing. This is all about contraceptives and keeping people from having babies and exterminating the black race. And they're saying improving maternal health helps out. Is, is, that's what that is. Go to the other side. Scroll it over. Oh, no, what's up? Last part, last part. Read the last part. What's up? What's up? With family planning a core element. With family planning a core element. How is killing children a core element of the family? There is no family if you're killing off your children and committing abortions. That's part of the plan. That's their idea of family planning. Yeah. Hey, scroll to the other side real quick. Over real quick to the other side. Because there's something else they, they put up there too. Where is it at? Nah, nah, I'm talking about the homosexuality they promote. It's somewhere in there. That they got it in there, right there. Encourage increased homosexuality. That's they got that in there too. Fertility control agents in the water. That's your fluoride. This says social constraints. In other words, that's that's how they that's social engineering. That's what we see with these commercials. That the the Cadillac commercial, social engineering. Look at that. Now, uh, what we go up, go up, top. go up, some about the marriage. It says uh, postpone or avoid marriage. Right. The strong black woman. That's her right there. That's just right Altered the image of the ideal family size. That's the strong black woman. Give me my pantsuit. That's all it, I need. It says heels. fertility control agents in your water supply. That's your fluoride and hydrofluorisic acid. Also, uh, yeah, because it, it, it messes, it gets absorbed by your, your thyroid. And with the woman's thyroid twice the size as the man, that's why a lot of our sisters have uh, uh, many problems, uh, uh, Hormonal imbalance because of what they put in the water aid, uh, yep. the agents in the water supply. The white man has many trains, many trains, as you see. Total warfare. Go to Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 21 and verse 22. If men strive and hurt a woman with child so that her fruit depart from her. So before we read this, 
Abortion is a murder, right? If it's in the first trimester or if it's pre-trimester, two or three weeks, plan B is a murder, right? Let's see what the Holy Bible and the Most High God says. What he thinks about what you're doing. Start at the top. Verse 22. Uh-huh. If men strive and hurt a woman with child. So if, if a man is fighting with a woman and she's pregnant. So that her fruit depart from her. And he hurts her or kills her. And yet no. Meaning, meaning what? If the fruit depart, meaning what that baby's gone too. Or she got hit in the stomach and now the baby's gone. And yet no mischief follow. So this might not, he might not um, purposely meant to do that to her. But what? Let's see. There's still a judgment. He shall be surely punished. He's still going to be punished. According as the woman's husband will lay upon him. Uh-huh. And he shall pay as the judges determine. As the judges determine. And they're using the scriptures. Now let's see. Read, read 23. And if any mischief follow. And if it was purposely, like, I'm going to push it down the steps. I ain't, trying to, I ain't trying to be dad right now. Or they owe an abortion. Then thou shalt give life for life. You killed that woman and that child. You took two lives. So you got to give your life for that too. You got to give your life for that. That is murder. But that's even in American law. If you if you uh, 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 kill, if somebody go out there and shoot a, a, a woman and she's two weeks pregnant or whatever, that's a double homicide. That's so the, the turn around and say abortion isn't murder makes no sense when if you if somebody goes or even if you get in an accident in this uh, uh, vehicular manslaughter that's a double offense. That's in their law and they got that from the Bible, but they can still fool y'all, still fooling y'all, y'all body, y'all choice. Get Jeremiah one and five. Jeremiah one and five. Let's see what the Most High says about about when a child is truly a child. Let's see. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So before the Most High sends any of our souls down into that zygote or down into, into, into our mother's uterus, when that seed, re when that sperm reaches the egg and starts forming, the Most High already was sending, he was a soul was getting ready to send there. Before, you, before your father and your mother, before your father ejaculated and your mother, that soul was on the way. The Most High seen it coming. And before thou camest forth out of the womb. And before we came forth out of the womb, what does that mean? The Most High had us, had us alive in the womb. A soul is in that zygote that you think is only, oh, it's smaller than, it's like a penny. No, nah, that's still a life. A soul is in there. You killing something that the Most High made and formed with his hands. What do you think the Most High is going to do to you if you continue that and don't repent of that? Read that. I sanctified thee. The Most High sanctified that zygote. He sanct sanctified that baby you putting in the trash can. He sanctified that thing, and you throwing it away. And I ordained thee a prophet unto you the nations. You throwing away a prophet that could have helped wake up these nations. You threw away a righteous mother that could have helped birth, birth more righteous people in this nation. You doing the same thing you mad at the white man for. They killing our people. Ah, da, 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 da. You killing your people too. Purposely. And you love it, and you keep doing it back and back and back and back. Read. Finish that. I ordained thee a prophet. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So you keep you keeping Christ from returning. You single handedly are, are slowing down the process of Christ from returning because you the deliver our deliverance from this captivity because you want to kill your child. That's what you're doing. Go to Leviticus twenty and two. The book of Leviticus, chapter twenty and verse two. Again. Again, because the most I have to always remind us. Thou shalt say to the children of Israel. Uh-huh. So this is a law that applies to us. Who cares if it's white women? White women are boarding too. So what? We're not talking about them. We're talking about our own people, our own race. Why you care about what the white woman does or what the Asian woman does? Who cares? We're talking about our own people. So read that again. Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel. Uh-huh. Whosoever he be of the children of Israel. Uh-huh. Or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel. So when we ruling? They're going to they gonna have to follow our laws. Or they, they got put to death too. A white woman or African or Asian woman did, did that. They got put to death because they was under our rulership. But right now, we under their rulership because of our sins because we allow stuff like this to happen. That giveth any of his seed unto Molech. That gets killed any of your children. You put them on the altar. You burn them. You take a hot wire hanger and shove it up in there. You go to the abortion clinic. You put your baby in the trash can. You, you, you punch yourself in the stomach. You drink a whole bottle of vodka and, and smoke a whole bunch of drugs to try to kill your baby so it look like an accident. Read. He shall surely be put to death. You, you woman, 
that do that, you men that support buying plan, uh, uh, plan B and taking them to the abortion clinic, you women that do that without letting fathers know, you say, oh, no, nah, he, he ain't going to be the father of my child. I'm, I'm going I'm to get rid of this thing. That is wicked as hell, and you will be put to death if you do not repent. Read. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. So right now we're not doing that, but the Christ and the Most High are going to send certain things that's going to take you out. A car accident, a stray bullet. It happens every day. Or it might just be waiting for you when, uh, when the eternal punishment. It could be waiting for you then. Either way, it's not good. Sirach 42. The book of Sirach, chapter 42 and verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. The father what? Waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. So if a father loves and cares about his daughter, he's going to be worried when, damn, she's not home yet. It's 830. I hope everything's okay. School let her at 5 o'clock. It's been three hours. She not answering my phone. Where's she at? Read. And the care for her taketh away sleep. And the care for her because he loves his daughter. He can't sleep. He can't rest because he doesn't know where she's at. He doesn't know if she's safe or not. A righteous father would, would think this way. When she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age. When she is young, he's, he's going he's gonna to have that care. But what? Lest she pass away the flower of her age. And, uh -huh. being, and being married. So, so if she passed the flower, the flower of her age being married. Lest she should be hated. So she shouldn't be sleeping around doing anything like that unless she is married. Because if a, if, a, if, if a father is most of the time, if a dad lives with his daughter and she's not home at a certain time, he are, in his mind, he already thinking like, damn, one of them, one of them dumb ass punks is, is, is touching my daughter right now. I know what's going on. Because when, she, when she's with, uh, uh, when she's with uh, uh, Keisha and what's her name, she always calling me. Oh, yeah, we eat them all, daddy. We doing this and that. Now she's not answering my phone call. Some wicked nigga is up in her. That's what happened. He breathing? In her virginity. Uh-huh. Lest she should be defiled. So if she's defiled, that's what makes her get hated. Keep She got defiled by some random dude that she's not even going to marry. A no good nigga. Read. And gotten with child in her father's house. Now she's pregnant. Daddy, I don't know what to do. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And having a an husband. And having a husband, meaning that she should have married that man. They should have got married at the right age, not in no 15, 16 year old, uh, 16, what's that joint? Uh, 16 and pregnant, or whatever that show was called. Yeah. Lest she should There's a TV show. They have TV shows on those things. 16 and pregnant, promoting it, showing, showing kids, yeah, you can maneuver this lifestyle. It's not that bad. I endured. You can do it too. No, you're not supposed to do it. Read. Lest she should misbehave herself. That's misbehaving yourself according to the scriptures, sleeping around in your father's house, getting, uh, getting pregnant. That is against the scriptures. Read. Is that it? And when she is married, lest she should be barren. Uh-huh. Keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter. You got to keep. If you, know, if you think, if you know your daughter acts loose, you know her mother's loose and teaches her those ways, you got to be strict as hell when it's your turn to have her at your house. Don't let her be out late at night. You better, put, you better get that uh, find my iPhone on there. Know where your daughter is at. Get that ring app in your house. Hey, Officer Michael, so you don't teach him how to have, enjoy sex at 10 years old like Esau say? Not at all. <laughs> Lest she make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies. Lest the white man says, yes, we got another stupid black woman. Now she's going to do the same thing to her son or her daughter and so on and so on. They're going to sit back, drink their whiskey and smoke a cigar. We got another one, boys. And um, a byword in the city. And a byword. Meaning what? A hoe, uh, 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 a scallywag, a slut, a thought, whatever, whatever term you use. And a reproach among the people. And a reproach among the people, like that's back in the day. I know in, a, in a, uh, like certain people's generations, you got sent, you got sent back to what? Uh, uh, the South, right? Isn't that what they did? Yeah, down, you got sent down South. Ain't nobody see you no more. You was out of there. Because it was embarrassing. You know what I mean? The, the parents was ashamed. Now it's just like you got people... Proud, man. It's crazy, man. We living in a backwards world, man. What's funny is I know with some, uh, uh, so some, some remnant people, they send their kids back to Africa. Uh, you you, you want to be loose? You want to you be loose over here? Sleeping around, smoking, smoking weed? Okay, go back home. See how we living. See, see, what, I, see what I told for to, to give you this good life and you throwing it back in my face. That's what they do. Teach them a lesson. And make thee ashamed before the multitude. Ashamed before the multitude. Damn, you're a horrible ass parent. Your daughter got pregnant at 14 years old. What kind of a father or mother are you? You allowed that? You knew she had a boyfriend and didn't say nothing? Oh, yeah, you know, they're kids. Nah. Guess the rock, uh, Susanna. Susanna, verse 2. Last scripture. 
The book of Susanna, verse 2. Uh-huh. And he took a wife whose name was Susanna. Uh, wait, start from verse 1. Verse 1. There dwelt a man in Babylon called Joachim. So Joachim in Babylon, meaning what? This brother was in captivity. Mm-hmm. Just, just like we are today. We in captivity. Read. And he took a wife. And he took a wife. And he, didn't, he didn't take a hoe. He didn't take a side piece. He didn't take a, a, a jump off. He didn't take a joint. He didn't take, uh, this is my girl. We, we, just, we, we just cooling. We just talking. Nah, he took a wife. Whose name was Susanna. Whose name was Susanna. The daughter of Chelsea. So meaning what? He knew the father. A very fair woman. And one that. A very, so she was a beautiful woman. And one that feared the Lord. And one that feared the Lord. He didn't get her because she had the big cheeks. She was bad. She was a Coke bottle. She looked like a, 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 cap, a capital S. Nah, he took her because she was righteous and feared the Lord. As we also, we also be looking to prove, if you're not married, if you're looking to prove, prove upon somebody who was, who was going to keep the commandments, not just on looks. In other words, she wasn't under the spell of Babylon. Nope. That's what that's talking about. She wasn't under no evil communication Strong at all. black. She wasn't a strong black woman, in other words. And with that. Oh, read verse 3, verse 3. Verse 3. Her parents also were righteous. Her what? Her parents also were righteous. So her parents also were righteous, meaning what? They were following what it said in Deuteronomy 6 and in Proverbs and the many scriptures we said. They was teaching her the right way. Her husband knew the parents, knew the father. Mm-hmm. The, they did it the right way. Exactly. And taught their daughter. Accor- and what? And taught their daughter. And taught their daughter. According to the law of Moses. According to the law of Moses. It ain't say B E T. According to the law of Love and Moses. Hip-hop. That's Damn. the law of Moses, man. That's how we gotta rebuild our communities. We didn't try it all these different ways. It's time to repent and come back to who we are, the children of Israel. With that family, we say shalom. Most high Christ shalom. Blessed. Most high Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.